Where have these weapons originated, Colin, do you think? Well, some of them have been in block, but again, how they actually ended up in Northern Ireland is another matter. We all know who's imported weapons over the years or who's sent them into friendly states. I would be amazed if these guns don't belong or ultimately didn't belong to the provisional IRA. Colin Green there, that report from Mark Mallett. Just to update you on some breaking news that we have received this evening. Since we have come on air, we have reported that a policeman has been injured in a shooting in Craigavon tonight. The latest information we have is that he has been taken to Craigavon Hospital. We will update you on that while we are on air. We are with you tonight until half past 11. Now, at this stage in the programme, we're joined in the studio by Suzanne Breen, the Northern Editor of the Sunday Tribune, and Henry MacDonald, the Ireland Correspondent for The Guardian. We still have no admission as to who was behind the shooting of the policeman tonight, Suzanne Breen, but you have talked to the real IRA. Who are they? The real IRA were formed in 1997. Um, they were former senior members of the provisional IRA, long-standing provisional members. They disagreed with the political strategy of Sinn Féin. They believed that it wasn't going to bring about a united Ireland, and they opposed the provisional IRA's second ceasefire. How many of them are there? There are several hundred real IRA members. The organisation would not be as strong as the provisionals were pre-1994, um, but they have been building, quietly building, within the past 18 months, um, all over various mm. parts of Northern Ireland. And they've shown that they have the capability to kill? They've shown that they have the capability to kill. They have previously said it, I think it was ignored a lot of the time by the media because they haven't inflicted casualties on and fatalities on the security forces. Um, what I think will worry the security forces is that they can strike in places like Antrim, which are not traditional Republican areas. Kenny MacDonald, was this a case of them getting lucky? Well, I think it's more than just lucky, obviously. I think it was also a case of pre-planning. Clearly, there was some prior intelligence to the uh, people, you know, coming out of bases, taking the takeaway through that kind of thing, and obviously they, they, they took their chance. So the army dropped their dropped their guard too. Oh, no, undoubtedly, but they, and obviously they took their chance, and uh, you know, because from the from the terrorist point of view, they have a risk as well, which is that they risk being shot at mm -hmm. by people in the base or indeed being arrested and put away for a long time. So and, and they are, as uh, Suzanne Breen says, former members of the IRA, so they are capable of killing. Well, I would imagine the cadre, the key core of, of, of the, the, that organisation, are former members. They, they have been recruiting as well, let's not forget. And I, I agree with Suzanne's analysis that this particular gruesome incident will probably act as some kind of recruiting sergeant for people at the fringes of society who are disaffected young Republicans, for instance. I think this undoubtedly will act as a rallying call for them. Are they capable of a campaign? This is a big question, obviously, whatever happens tonight in relation to what we're hearing from Craig Avon. We'll, we'll, we'll answer that question perhaps. I mean, in, in order to, to carry out the rain, we should destabilise the political process and create a crisis over security. They need to keep to do more than just one big incident. They need to keep this up on a rolling basis. Well, within the last couple of weeks, you spoke to them uh, in the for, for the Sunday Tribune, Suzanne Breen. Um, they obviously would say that they have the capability of a campaign. Do you believe them? Um, they wouldn't, I don't think they would say they have the capability of a sustained campaign. What they have is the capability of carrying out various high-profile attacks. They will be using those attacks to strengthen their organisation um, and to gain recruits. What I think people are forgetting is that a lot of, of people in the senior position in the real IRA actually made bombs for years for the provisional IRA. They're very capable. The real IRA was the first organisation, I believe, to actually detonate a bomb by mobile phone. Um, so it isn't a case that they have got you know, new bomb makers, sophisticated expertise. These people have been very, very capable for a long time. A good example of that is Castle Well and the bomb last month, which apparently contained a secondary device as well, and it was something which, according to one of my sources, spooked the ATO, the Army Technical Officers, and indeed the wider security community in terms of its sophistication. Given that they have murdered over the weekend, they'll be uh, pleased at the reaction. Prime Minister has come for a start. Yes, but at the same time, I think the political reaction has been very, very interesting because it, it, they haven't been able yet to decouple the major parties in the partial arrangement. In fact, they were quite, it surprised a lot of people, quite united. It was, a, it was a united front put on. So they would have to do a lot more to, to cause the kind of security crisis that would, that would in its turn, uh, bring about a political crisis between the parties. But thus far, they've not done that quite the opposite. Indeed, and that was very, that was very apparent today, wasn't it, Suzanne Breen? There was a defiance among the politicians at Stormont today that they weren't going to let the weekends happening 
derail the process. Absolutely, um, I would agree with that. There seems to be no divisions at Stormont. But what I would say is that um, the reaction in all the national media and international media interest shows that there is a hierarchy of victims in Northern Ireland. If a local police officer, two local police officers had been killed instead of two British soldiers, we wouldn't have had such focus. And I think, you know, the, the, the real IRA will pick up on that and will realise that the targets for high profile targets that it will be looking at will be British soldiers and the, 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 the mainland. Um, I, I don't think, unfortunately, if police officers in Derry or Dungannon had died in previous attacks, we would have seen this huge media interest. I think that that, that sadly shows there's a hierarchy of victims in Northern Ireland. There has been a political condemnation, but as we know from experience in Northern Ireland, you do not need a political mandate to wage a war. No, you don't. I mean, it, you can't keep a, a, a terror campaign going with a relatively low support base. I mean, this is obvious, even not just in Northern Ireland. Look at Spain, for example. Etta is still going after 30 odd years, and no, no uh, remote chance of success. But they keep going, and, and I, I would draw a, draw a comparison there with, with the real IRA. They still uh, it's ideological motivation, which is a very powerful force. We we need to distinguish between the reaction in wider Northern Ireland society and that in traditional Republican heartlands. Um, it might be unpopular to say so, but there will be hardline Republicans um, who have empathy with the. Real IRA's attacks um, or, and indeed support. That certainly isn't the case in wider Northern Ireland society. But in places like the Bogside and Ballymurphy and whatever, there will be people who won't have much sympathy for the, for the soldiers. N not a majority of opinion at all in Northern Ireland, um, but certainly a strand. Suzanne Green, Henry MacDonald. Thank you very much indeed. Well, now, coming up after the break, we'll have an update on that breaking story of a policeman shot tonight in Craig Avenue. Our reporter, Mark Mallet, will be here straight after the break with an update. Again, you're with uh, a UTV Live news special on this Monday evening. We have some breaking news on the programme tonight, and that is the story of a policeman who has been shot in Craig Avon. Mark Mallard is with us now. Mark, uh, can you give us the latest? Well, details very sketchy at the moment, Paul, and exactly what has happened here. This attack seems to have happened an hour ago, around about 10 o'clock uh, in Craig Avon, in the Lismore Manor area, which is a mainly Republican area of uh, Craig Avon. Now, police have been able to tell us that there is at least one officer that has been injured in this attack this evening. Now, have we any idea of his condition? Details very sketchy. We know he or she has been taken to Craig Avon Area Hospital. We have no clear information on the exact nature of the officer's condition or the seriousness indeed of their injuries. And we're also working on, on finding out why exactly police were in this area at this time of the night. Uh, as I said, details very sketchy at the moment, Paul, but we're trying to get as much information as we can on the ground. Yeah, Mark, well, thank you very much for the, the latest there. We're on air for another half hour, so if we have any further developments, clearly you bring them to us. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now we're going back to Andrew, which is uh, the scene of the shooting on Saturday night. Our reporter has been there today, Siobhan McGarry. Hello again, Siobhan. Good evening, Well, Paul, church leaders here have branded the uh, murders of the two young soldiers as a deliberate attempt to destabilise the peace process. I'm joined now by two local clergymen, Father Tony Devlin and uh, Reverend Jack Moore. Uh, first of all, Father Devlin, um, your reaction to what has happened here this weekend? It's been a very difficult weekend, but it has improved as the days have gone on. The sadness will never be overcome of the death of those young men or the tragedies for their families but the support that they receive from the whole community, the politicians who have agreed to work even harder to work for the peace has given some encouragement today. And Reverend Moore, as we came on air this evening, we just heard that there's been another shooting of a policeman in Craigavon. Uh, I mean, how do you feel about this uh, after these murders at the weekend? I, I feel terrible. 